Hey, my name is Sahil and today we are going to continue our series on earthing and lightning protection systems. In the last video, we explored the topic of lightning conductors. In this video, we are going to go into more detail about lightning arresters and their types. By the end of this video, you will have a thorough understanding of the two major types of lightning arresters, namely conventional arresters and ESE lightning arresters and the differences between these two types. First, let's just look at what is a lightning arrestor. We know that a lightning strike discharges an enormous amount of energy in a short period of time. This can hit buildings or electrical systems in an area and result in unpredictable damage. In order to protect these systems, we have lightning arresters installed on top of the buildings. A lightning arrestor is the primary part of a lightning protection system. The lightning protection system protects the power system by directing the charges from the lightning strikes to the ground through a low resistance path. Thus, the charges get grounded, saving the electrical systems from any damage caused by the lightning. There are mainly two types of lightning arresters in use today. The first is the conventional lightning arrestor, also called the Franklin Rod. The second is the Early Streamer Emission or ESE Lightning Arrestor. Let's start by talking about conventional lighting arresters. A conventional lighting arrestor or Franklin rod is usually used in the lighting protection of simple structures. Franklin rods are long metallic rods placed on the highest point of a structure. The most common material used for this is copper. This rod is attached to long metallic conductors which lets the electric charge flow directly to the ground saving the structure from fire and other damages. The effectiveness of a Franklin rod is decided based on its position, structure, material use and physical interaction with the charged clouds during lightning. As mentioned earlier, conventional lightning protection systems or Franklin rods are best for protecting a simple structure or a small area. But when you need to protect a larger area or a more complex structure, you need to use more than one lightning arrestor, you need to use more down conductors and more complicated earthing designs. This will result in higher costs, extra time spent and more manpower used to set up the entire lighting protection system for your structure. As a result, they are generally used in smaller structures such as homes and other residential buildings. Now let's talk about the EAC lighting arrestor. The key purpose of using an early streamer emission or EAC lightning arrestor is to have a faster conductive point of discharge for the lightning bolt and to ground the extra current safely. A single EAC arrestor can cover a larger area unlike conventional arrestors. Thus, instead of hitting random objects or the structure, the lightning bolt will always conduct through the EAC lightning arrestor and the high voltage spikes are grounded safely. Let us look at how an ESE arrestor works. The emission from the ESE is generated by storing energy from the ambient electromagnetic field at the time of the lightning events. The lower electrodes of an ESE collect this energy and stores it in its capacitors. In normal conditions, the air terminal stays in standby mode. When a charged cloud approaches the structure, it neutralizes the charges at the tip of the air terminal by releasing the stored energy from the upper electrodes. The upward streamer from the EAC arrestor meets the downward streamer from the clouds, creating a path for discharge. The lightning bolt then passes safely through the conductive body of the EAC lightning arrestor to the down conductors and then safely into the ground, thus protecting the building. Some EAC arrestors have a lightning strike counter attached to them. This helps us to get a count of how many times the ESE arrestor was struck by lightning. We will learn more about lightning strike counters in another video. So now let us look at the main differences between a conventional lightning system and an ESE lightning arrestor system. The main difference between a conventional arrestor and an ESE lightning arrestor is in the response time, also called the delta T, taken by them to ground the lightning strike through the lightning protection system. The second difference is in the working principle of an EAC lightning arrestor, which enables a larger radius of protection compared to a conventional lightning rod. The reason we have a larger area of protection with an EAC is because as the EAC releases that stored energy, 
and it creates an upward streamer. This increases the area of protection of the ESC. The third difference between an ESC and a conventional lighting arrestor system is that an ESC has fewer parts and is easier to install. It also requires a fewer number of down conductors and connections, thus saving time, money and labor. As a result, taking into account the risk factors and geographical and structural requirements, you should choose the appropriate lighting arrestor and design the most efficient lighting protection system for your structure. Rather than opting for a generally followed practice, it is ideal to design an appropriate lighting protection system for your structure. At Axis, we design lighting protection systems based on your requirements. We go to the field, we check out your structure and we design as per your structure. We hope this video was helpful for you. Please follow our channel for more videos on earthing and lighting protection and other electrical systems. Leave a comment below and let us know which type of lighting protection system would you use for your building. You can also suggest any topic that you would like to learn more about in the electrical space. Do not forget to like and to subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you can be notified when we release our latest videos. Thanks.